Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to Teleglitch. This game is vicious. Vicious and evil. But here we stand. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Little green man with a pretty hefty arsenal of kit and a whole facility out for his blood. So, we immediately find ourselves another pistol, another med kit, which is nice, and more explosives, and a microchip. A very nice combination with them. So up until now, we haven't bothered combining anything, so we're probably going to change that and drop this pistol, though. I just need the bullets out of it. If we hit C, we enter the crafting menu, and there's a whole bunch of different things we can craft. Now, we only have all these options because we've picked up so much stuff, but still, we have a pretty good selection of options here. So, we can make higher grade explosives by combining two of these RDX 250s together into an RDX 500. These are generally more powerful, they're uh, good for combining into different other tools as well. We can make an auto pistol, which is a pistol which shoots faster and has a higher uh, ammo capacity. I don't know if it actually does more damage, I think it just shoots faster. We can make a drum-loaded machine gun, which we're not going to do. We can make a detector, which is a very nice tool. The detector is great because it allows you to know when you're going to get swarmed by a pipe. Now, the swarms are pretty easy to deal with when you know they're coming, but if they catch you off guard and you get stuck in a wall or something, they can do massive damage to you. So a detector is a wonderful thing. I'll probably make one of these. You have an armor, the uh, armored grenade launcher. Adhesive grenade launcher number three. This shoots three grenades at once, at once, and in my opinion, it's a direct downgrade from the, uh, the grenade launcher number one. Since you only need two grenades to open a secret wall, this reduces the efficiency of your ammo in that case, and it also is just kind of wasteful. We can make stimulants by combining uh, medkits with explosives, that makes you move faster, and nail guns, which shoot nails, which you have to make out of nail gun ammo, which is nail boxes and explosives, which is kind of wasteful as well. We can also make plates, which are super, super valuable, and we're going to make two of them right now. Two plates, there we go, and the reason you want plates is because plates can be turned into armor. Armor is amazing. It reduces the amount of damage you take from bullet weapons. There are not a lot of people who wield guns in the first floor of this facility, or the second floor. There's none, in fact. But there's always at least one or two on the third floor, and there may be even more. So we're going to make ourselves some armor to protect ourselves from the inevitable guns. Now we have, in addition to our health, an armor meter. The armor doesn't completely reduce damage you take from guns, but it does bring it down pretty significantly lower. But the problem with it is it only reduces ranged ammo, ranged, ranged damage rather, while it does take a, a durability hit every time you take any melee damage as well. So we want to try and be careful to make sure we don't lose it prematurely. Now we're also going to make ourselves a detector to protect ourselves against anything that might try and sneak up on us. The thing about microchips is they're incredibly valuable if you can hold on to them until later when you can combine them together with... Uh, either a pair of medkit 25s or a medkit 50 because it makes an emergency teleporter which will teleport you to safety if you get killed which is very nice but for the time being we're gonna have to leave that there I think I might go ahead and make the auto pistol too sure why not we'll make ourselves an auto pistol I haven't found a whole lot of important uses for the hardware really so we're gonna make ourselves an auto pistol for now click there we go this lets us load up a bit more ammo in it at once, and is a little bit better for dealing with bigger swarms, because you can fire it a little bit quicker without having to reload again. However, I'm going to be right back before we go any further, uh, and I'll see you again in a quick second here. Sorry about this. Sorry about that. Let's get moving here again. So, what can we find in this place? Probably all manner of terrible things. Lots of pipes. We do have a detector, which tells us this one hides a swarm. So does that one. Alright, well we might try and fight the swarms anyway, but uh oh, not now. You need to die, sir. Stop moving. Stop moving! Stop! Oh, wow, he was persistent. Got a pretty good hit on us, too. I was hoping we'd be able to stop him there, but it didn't happen. Now the problem here is I want to fight these swarms, because fighting the swarms has a potential to drop canned meats for you. Potentially more than one, even. But we have nowhere to move, so before I trigger these guys, I'm going to explore forwards a little bit and try and figure out if we have any room to maneuver up ahead. Now, we know there's a teleglitch right here, which might be the best possible way of dealing with these guys. So all we have to do is lead them forwards, and they should dash themselves into the teleglitch and destroy themselves. But, then again, it is also zombies who are pretty hard to maneuver around. <clears throat> so it's hard to say. Is that a secret down there? No, it just looks like one. Alright. Well, let's take a little bit more of a look around first, and then we'll come back. Holy enemies, Batman. Alright, the problem with the zombies is they move in such a weird, like, boosting way. They're 
kind of hard to lead into traps like this. Because they slow down in such a hurry. Alright, that one dropped the canned meat on the edge there, that's fine. You should be able to get that no problem. I unfortunately moved too quickly there. Oh, hello. There's a lot of zombies in this area, apparently. Come on, get out of here, zombies. You're taking so much damage, you're ruining my armor. Jeez. Alright, let's grab that canned meat. Very carefully, there we go. Ow. That's all I have to say to that. Ow. We're now down below 100 health, which is kind of lame. Alright. Back over this way. Let's just try and deal with these swarms, because why not? They come in range, and they swarm out at us. If we need to, we're going to start shotgunning them, but I want to try and get them all to come in here first. Nope, that's not going to work. Shotgun time! This is why we have this weapon, anyway. Basically. This is our swarm weapon. We can switch to the knife once they start to look injured, but for now I just want to shoot them. Gotta be careful not to back ourselves into one of those little bitches. Come on now. Stop that. That's the problem I have with these guys, though. They're so hard to predict where they're gonna be. I've already wasted a ton of our armor. Probably should have waited. But the problem is, you never know when those armored guys are gonna come to you, so you really have to be prepared for anything. Let's go bring on the next swarm and see if we can get any health from them. We got one 10 health item from those guys, so it wasn't like we got nothing. It definitely wasn't what I was hoping for. We swarm them into that? Nope. Wrong gun. There we go. That's a little bit less. There's a canned meat. As long as we don't take too much damage, it'll be worthwhile. There we go. Alright. Reload the shotgun. Reload the pistol, which should be used by mistake. Grab ourselves another canned meat. Alright, that might have been worthwhile. There's another canned meat. And that's how we do it, just for the chance of getting those things. What's this? Storage cabinets marked on map. Okay. Very careful moving in here, though, because when we see those people with guns, we need to be the first one to shoot, otherwise they will do a lot of damage to us. Very nervous moving into new areas now. Lots of teleglitches in this area. Holy cow. They're everywhere. Everywhere! Every room practically has one. More shotgun shells, more canned meats. We've got a lot of healing food, though, which is good. Alright, what's this? Cabinet? It's got a medkit 50 in it. Very nice. And more explosives and more grenades. Very nice. <clears throat> Alright, nothing in that room, unfortunately. Always appreciative of medkit 50s. Nothing in there. Alright. You be very careful around those tele glitches, because they are literally just game over areas. If you touch them, you're dead. And there's no way to load back in in this game. If you die, you're gone. You're gone for good. Alright, what's down here? We're looking for something, too. This area has the potential to hide a very important area. There is a potential hidden or <laughs> secret area which leads to a level skip. If we can find it, we can jump level 4 altogether and go straight to level 5, which is often really useful because you get a ton of bonus items if you can manage it. Now, there's a hard fight that you have to survive to be able to try it, but it can be very valuable if you can get it to work. Our armor is really burning down quickly, which is unfortunate. This is why I normally don't make the armor at the start of the level, but unfortunately, since it's impossible to know where the uh, armored enemies are going, or the gun-wielding enemies are going to be, and I have been, like, immediately shot by them in the first room out of the teleporter, you really have to play it safe. I don't see anybody. Hello? No. There's a secret in this room, so that's good. Before we do anything else, though, we're going to look around and make sure we find any enemies that might be coming to get us. Because we don't want to get caught off guard here at any costs. That is our last thing on our mind. Oh, come on now with this damaging zombies. That's a problem with them, though. They spin around and they're super hard to predict, so it's really easy for them to shoot you. And the enemies who are on this map... Oop, that was the wrong button. May very well be patrolling. So we have to be careful about running into them later on unexpectedly. There he is! Ah, ow! 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 We need to die. Oh, there's another one! Ow! They hurt so bad! This is why we need to get the shoot on them first. The shoot on them? The drop on them. Ow! 
Well, we found them, and our armor was alive, so we did take less damage from them, but they hurt. And that's the problem with them. They sneak up on you, like that. And then they do all kinds of damage. Especially if you're not wearing armor anymore. They take a lot of ammo to fight, too, which is unfortunate, but they do often drop guns. So you can drop the gun and get 15 bullets back from them for the gun that you're actually wielding. Which is nice, but... Ow. And that those guys are evil. If you uh, if you get backed up into a squad of them, you're not expecting it, because they do patrol around the map, they will just kill you. Alright, there's a tube. What's in here? Alright, this one has a bunch of nail boxes and tubes. Nothing too wonderful, unfortunately, but we'll take it. Alright, so we're going to probably drop our nail boxes soon, because I don't think we're going to use them for anything. But tubes are always useful. <clears throat> Alright. Now this is a door, I believe. No, this is not the door one. There's an area which has a giant locked door on this floor, or at least there should be, and we can find a button somewhere else to open it, but so far we haven't Whoop! seen any sign of that. You got stabbed. We probably got stabbed in the process too, though, because we're to 38 health, which is terrible. So, we're going to use one of our medkit 25s, 63 health, and we'll use one more of them, up to 88 health. There we go. Ugh, what a nasty place we're finding ourselves in. And there's nothing in here. All right. Yeah, these, these gun-wielding guards are dangerous. Very much so. Let's keep looking around here. Oh, there's a big guy. Come on. Stop it, little zombie. I'm trying to kill the big zombie. I think he's dead, though. I just can't hit this guy. Come on now, stop that. Their crazy movements are really hard to hit. Alright, I think we killed him properly. Good. Whew. Heavy rifle, very nice. Another med kit, explosives, and another microchip. Unfortunately, our inventory is now full, so we're gonna have to start dumping things. So we're gonna move the heavy rifle up here. Heavy rifle is a great armor-piercing weapon. We're not gonna need it much in the early game, but it's good to have. We can start accumulating ammo for it and whatnot. Now, we're not safe yet, so doing combinations and whatnot is not necessarily a good idea, but we are gonna eat a bunch of canned meats. There we go and drop one and pick it back up again to combine it with the previous one. We could combine some of the explosives, but they actually stack better when they're in a lower size, because you can only stack two RDX 500s together, or you can stack five RDX 250s. So you can stack four or five. It's better to stack five. We have another microchip, which means we can probably just straight up make... I don't know, we need two microchips to make the teleporter, that's right. So I'll just hold on to this for a while longer then. All right, what's in this crate? Another nail box, more explosives, more rifle ammo. Rifle ammo is good, that's for the heavy rifle. <sighs> okay. Can we get past this railing? I don't think so. No. Alright, down to the bottom we go then. Nothing there. Okay. Over to the left we go then. Is there anything else in this bottom area? Not that I see. Alright, we just have to go this way then. What's in here? Gun people. Nope, 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 nope. The nice thing with the gun people is they will shoot other people in the back. So they're not, like, entirely just gunning for you. They'll kill their allies by mistake, but still. Alright, there's a public message concerning the nail gun. To the personnel of the third sector by Product Productivity Monitoring Administration Protocol number 403. Apparently, somebody has engineered a nail gun that makes a funny sound when it shoots. This curiosity has sparked interest in entertainment seeking from facility scientists of sectors 3, 7, and 9, resulting in a sudden drop of productivity. Please stop this experimentation with trivial projects during research work time and reserve such activities for private time. You can make upgraded nail guns by sticking more tubes on them, and you wind up with like a nail gun that shoots five bullets at once, which is hilarious. But the problem with it is it becomes rapidly low value, as it's a very short-range weapon and doesn't do a lot of damage or piercing. So... As funny as it is, it's actually it seems to be a detrimental thing to actually make. It's down here. Very nervous. Anytime we open empty, large empty areas now, because people who have guns or people who throw boulders are a lot more prevalent and more dangerous. Now we're already getting low on pistol ammo, which isn't great. But if we do run out of pistol ammo, we just switch to our machine gun as a primary ranged weapon, and then we should be okay. Whew! All right, secret right here. That's very nice. Let's pop that open. There we go, reload the machine gun, and we got another can gun, you jerk game. I don't want a can gun, can guns are actively bad. Alright, whatever. 
Just because they're actively detrimental to our health doesn't mean we have to complain about them. What else is there around here? So, not a lot so far. There's this, uh, another door down there, which we're probably going to need to go to later. Anything over here? No. Doorway over there. Okay. And another area over here. Oh, with a big enemy in it. Hello. Should have left you in peace, shouldn't I? There we go. I think he's dead. He might get back up again. Sometimes they do that, depending on the kind of weapon you use on them. No, we're good. All right. It's always good to find those guys, though, because even if it doesn't look like they're going to do anything to you, if you leave them alone, they might be able to sneak up on you later, which is never fun. All right. There's the exit. Hello. <laughs> really? Teleporter location marked on map as I'm looking at the teleporter in the teleporter room. Silly game. All right, so you have the teleporter to level four. But we don't want to try and take that unless we need to. We want to find the shortcut teleporter level five if we can and use that to get out of here because that is very nice. The stockpile of awesome supplies you can get if you can make it through the big battle in order to get there is super worthwhile. But it doesn't look like we're going to actually get that option this time, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Oh, there's a pipe in here which is going to rush us as soon as we open the door, isn't it? Yep. There you go. Thankfully, they're kind of pinned in a fairly small area, which makes our shotgun very effective. We stabbed the last couple ones. These guys who get up only have one health left, because they've already taken damage from the shotgun, so it's not so bad to deal with them that way. And they come at us in smaller bursts. But that was not great. We didn't get any items from them, so that's unfortunate. We're out of armor again, too, which is super not good. That's a big tele glitch. Hello. All right. There's actually nothing else here from the looks of it. There's no way to get to the secret area, unfortunately. That area only spawns some of the time. So we're going to have to go. Now the area, the secret area has a pretty solid indicator of where it is because there's always a little hole in the secret wall that leads to the secret area. So it's not like you're possible to miss it really as long as you can notice there's a giant hole in the wall. There's like a whole block missing, like about that size in the uh, secret area to the bonus fight. But it doesn't look like we get an option to do that this time, which is sad, because level 4 is a nasty one. The thing about level 4 is it often has a lot of um, gun-wielding enemies. A lot of them. More than 5, as far as I remember. Although 5 has some stronger ones. So, we're going to take a look at our crafting here before we move on. We could make some more high-grade explosives, which isn't necessarily a great plan. We could make an upgraded grenade launcher, stimulants, and nailed-in ammo. None of those things are really useful to us. What we are going to do, though, <coughs> is eat the rest of our canned meats before we go, because we might as well have that bonus health at this point. And we can grab some more empty cans. There we go. We can combine those into a plate again, so we're one step closer to actually being able to make more armor. And I think on the start of the next floor, we're going to drop our nail boxes there, because I don't think we're going to really need those anytime soon. And I can't combine that with the tubes. No, I can't. All right. Well, that's fine by me. So, we're getting pretty high on our gear. We need to dump some of it soon. For now, though, it's time to move on to the next floor and see what happens down there. We've got to release them from Pain 2, an achievement, which I believe is uh, for just killing lots of zombies. So, Even the dead can go crazy. Especially the dead, but sometimes also mutants, robots, or individual AI protocols. So this was the place where we put all of them. The scientists working here called themselves Necro Shrinks. I visited this place only once, on my first day on Medusa 1C. They were giving me the facility tour, and I happened to arrive to this madhouse of the dead at a very bad time. They had a bunch of crazy zombies who just wouldn't stop crying. They obeyed all the orders, behaved otherwise perfectly, but would occasionally cry. Such workers would obviously be a problem, so I arrived at the day when they decided to shut those poor fellows down and give them a total reset. They went one by one into the reset chair and were turned off like switches, while all the rest were watching and crying. It's a sight hard to forget. On the funny side, there were lazy zombies. Anyway, I decided to avoid this sector for the rest of my career after that first day. It seems avoidance is not an option this time. I hope my visit to the madhouse will be swift and clean. Well, no promises there, friend. Only 66% accuracy, which is pretty bad. It's because we had a lot of misses with our auto pistol there. The, the, the auto pistol might actually be a detrimental thing, because I believe the spread on it is wider than on the normal pistol, but whatever. Gotta upgrade something sometimes. Found two secrets, combined six items, and dropped seven monsters into the void. 
killed a lot of enemies. 56 small zombies, 3 giant zombies, 2 big mutants, and 7 guards. I'm going to check the time before we continue with this video, so we might actually be done now. Let's take a quick look and see. I think we are going to end this episode here, not because it's super long, it's only about 20 minutes, but I think 20 minutes is a reasonable episode length, and if I start another episode, it'll be like 50 minutes before we get it finished. So, we're going to be stopping here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This is a little bit of teleglitch here for you. I am Vanguard of Valor. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, bye bye